Hello everyone, my name is Ashish Sumaya and I am the Managing Director and CEO for Mutilal Oswal Asset Management Company. Uh, today I am here to uh, share with you one of the most important developments uh, for mutual fund investors which is related to uh, the recent budget announced by the Honorable Finance Minister on 1st February uh, 2020. And this important development is related to uh, mutual fund investments uh, in the dividend options. Uh, as you might be aware, in this budget one of the most important initiatives was that uh, the dividend distribution tax uh, which was deducted uh, on mutual fund dividends, uh, may it be debt funds, may it be equity funds, uh, there was a dividend distribution tax uh, which was being deducted each time uh, your fund house uh, paid a dividend to you. Uh, now I am here to talk about uh, dividends on equity funds. So effective this budget, uh, what is interesting is that the finance minister has announced that the dividend distribution tax would be abolished, uh, which is good. Um, but on the flip side, uh, the dividend whatever is declared from the equity fund would be added to the income of the SSE. Uh, what does this mean for you? So if you are someone uh, who doesn't actually have to pay income tax, let us say you know your tax bracket is such that uh, you do not have any incidence of income tax or let us say you are somebody who is in the tax bracket of say 5% or 10% uh, then this is good for you. Uh, the reason being that when you receive the dividend, uh, you will need to pay uh, the tax as per your income slab. Everybody in a tax slab, so whether it is 5%, 10% or whatever the number is, everybody in the lower tax slabs, it's great news. Uh, the reason being that you will receive the dividend without any distribution tax, it comes straight into your income and then uh, when you file your return, uh, you will have to pay whatever 5% or 10% you are supposed to pay. Uh, plus, also keep in mind, now when we declare the dividend, we need to deduct a tax deducted at source at a rate of 10% for anybody whose dividend is more than 5000 rupees. But you know what, when dividend distribution tax uh, becomes tax deducted at source, it means that when you file your income tax returns, uh, you get credit for whatever tax has already been deducted at source. So I think the good development is that instead of distribution tax, you know what, because distribution tax is gone. Uh, it doesn't get adjusted with your tax liability. And if you're in a lower tax bracket, then you end up actually paying more than what you deserve to pay. So the great news is that distribution tax is out. Now it is TDS and plus over and about TDS, when you pay your taxes, you need to file. So this is good for people who otherwise were in low tax bracket. But at the same time, this development is uh, quite negative. Uh, for people who are in the tax brackets of say 20% or 30% or you know because these are 20% plus surcharge and cess or 30% plus surcharge and cess and for those of you who are say you know annually 5 crore plus kind of incomes which goes all the way to 42.7% or 43% for all of these people decent dividend distribution tax was much better than having a situation where the dividend is going to get added to your income and then you will have to pay 30% plus surcharge or 20% plus surcharge or whatever. So just to recap, this whole development is very good for people who are in the low tax brackets. So for them, uh, there is a TDS at 10% and then when they file the returns, they will get credit for this. On the other hand, like I said, it's a negative development for everybody who is in the 20%, 30% or higher tax brackets because now the incidence of tax or the rate at which tax will be applied on the dividend goes up quite significantly. So who is this relevant for? I mean, you know, let us say, for example, you are directly owning some equity stocks, you're owning PMS. For all of those, the impact is minuscule because typically these portfolios, for example, we manage portfolios where the entire annual dividend yield is about 1 to 1.25%. Now on 1 to 1.25%, if your actual, uh, you know, uh, tax goes up from 18% to say 30%, the difference will be 0.1%, 0.2%, those kind of very tiny numbers. But where is this a big impact? It's a big impact if you are actually taking, let us say, you know, you have an equity hybrid fund or you have dynamic fund where you are actually or some equity funds where you are actually taking a monthly dividend or you are taking an annual dividend which is quite sizable. In all of those cases, your dividend will become an absolutely unattractive kind of uh, proposition. So for all of those people, the better option will be to move from dividend option into growth option 
and if you think that this cash flow which is coming monthly to you if you still find that this cash flow is important for you then my humble request is don't mix up the returns with the cash flow you know instead of taking a dividend option which is monthly and then you know you're going to have 20 30 percent tax being deducted the best option is that you switch from dividend option into growth option and in the growth option you go for a systematic withdrawal plan uh, you know, uh, we will be sharing some illustrations with you along with this video and you can see those illustrations. Through those numbers, you will clearly understand that if you go for dividend option, then there is a tax on the entire dividend which you earn. On the other hand, if you go for a systematic withdrawal option, what happens is that each month a certain amount gets redeemed from your investment and on when that investment is redeemed, a certain number of units obviously get redeemed. So whatever is the appreciation on the units which have been redeemed. So basically you are being paid capital plus a bit of gain. So only on the units which get redeemed, the difference in NAV is what gets taxed as capital gains tax. So while capital gains on a long term is only 10%, on top of it you are only paying on the, on the NAV change on the units which get redeemed. Hence through these illustrations what you will find is that systematic withdrawal plan uh, with the growth option is a far superior option than actually taking dividends. Uh, in fact, uh, you will be happy to know uh, we at Mutilal Oswal AMC, for example, when we created our Mutilal Oswal equity hybrid fund, we always knew uh, that dividend taxation has been uh, changing or evolving over a number of years. And hence, when we launched our equity hybrid fund, in fact, we did not have a dividend option at all. Since the time this equity hybrid fund has been created, we've always had a growth option with certain preset percentages fixed for the systematic withdrawal because we were always convinced that systematic withdrawal uh, with the growth option is a far superior and more tax efficient option than the dividend option. And whether it is monthly dividend or your equity fund with an annual dividend, uh, my suggestion is uh, that please weigh all the costs and please consider moving from dividend option to growth option. And like I already explained to you, if the cash flows on a regular basis are important to you, uh, even then, uh, please move from dividend option to growth option. And if you need the cash flows, then please register a systematic withdrawal plan. It will be far more tax efficient and it will definitely enhance the productivity of your investment. Uh, so this is what I wanted to share with you. Uh, please consult your financial advisor uh, before you make any of these changes. But yes, we find it important to share it with you because it is important for the efficiency of your investment. So thank you for listening me out and please look at the illustrations carefully. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully.